Today, we'll walk you through how to build a fire pit with pavers. Building a paver fire pit, it's a great addition for your backyard and they make great focal points for backyard entertainment. They're also long lasting, durable, and you can customize the size to fit your backyard needs. So in this video, we'll talk about the different paver fire pits and show you how easy they are to build. Now, if you don't want to figure out how many blocks that you need for the design that you want, then fire pit kits are great since everything you need is included. In our fire pit, the blocks in the fire pit ring insert it was all included. And the only thing that we needed to do was get construction glue to add between the layers to secure the blocks together. So the first thing you want to do is you want to prep your fire pit area. This is after you've picked out your fire pit kit. These can be bought at many of the big box stores like Lowe's or maybe even Home Depot or maybe even Ace Hardware. Check them out. And once you've picked that out, then you're ready to prep your site. You'll need to install your fire pit on a level ground and you can buy paver leveling sand if your area is unlevel, which will make it easier to level out the pavers quickly. Now, in our case, we already leveled out the sand in preparation for our river rock spread out. So we were confident that we could level the ground without any paver based sand that we needed. So we ended up having a half circle. That's the find area for the fire pit because this is where the river rock was. And we wanted the fire pit to be in the middle of that half circle. So we took some measurements side to side and front to back to determine the middle of that area. Once we figured out that middle area, we laid out the fire pit insert inside the center of that measurement just to determine the outer circle so that we could start placing the blocks. In your case, you'll probably have grass that you'll simply want to put the fire insert, mark the grass area that needs to come out from the inside and start to shovel out the grass area. Once you've prepped the area, then you can put the insert back in the center of the area and make an impression in the dirt so that you know exactly where you want to put your pavers. Now that I have my ring outlined in the sand, we're ready to begin inserting the blocks in a circular fashion. As you see here, this is what the kit looks like. Like I said, you can choose a square kit or a round kit depending on what your area has. And you also want to note that they are pretty heavy. So you're probably going to either need a truck bed or a smaller trailer like we got. You could also have Lowe's deliver it for a fee. The next thing you want to do is you kind of want to look at all of your paver blocks just to see if there are any chipped or cracked. We found several that had small chips on the outer edges. And this happens when the pavers are being transported from place to place. It's pretty common. But we were able to pick out all of those that were chipped so that we put that in the bottom. For us, we knew that the imperfections could be covered up by river rock on the bottom level. You might need to place some rocks around on that side, or if you don't mind a little bit of a rustic look, then just put them on the bottom. Once you look through all the pavers and see which ones you want to place on the bottom, then you're ready to place them around the outer circle. We alternated by placing a paver to the right and to the left of the original block. Having the circle outlined in the sand definitely helps keep the blocks in a tight fit, including the last block, which fit perfectly. Now I chose to fit the entire bottom layer of blocks before doing any final leveling. If your dirt is fairly soft, then sometimes you can take a mallet and tap on the blocks down if it's higher to the adjacent blocks. Then you can lay a four foot level across the bottom layer in different positions just to make sure that it's level all around. You only need to raise or lower a couple of blocks just to get everything level. Then you want to start the second level and place that first paver where it's halfway between the two lower level blocks. You want to alternate each of the leveling blocks and that makes it stronger. And this is similar to when you do a brick wall or a cinder block wall. Once you finish the second layer, then place the fire insert over the blocks to gauge how level everything is one last time. Since the blocks have some minor variations, we saw that there were a couple of blocks on the back side that were lower since the insert was just touching the second layer of blocks. We added some dirt to the bottom layer and that raised it up and made it a nice tight fit. Now you want to glue everything together. And now knowing everything that was completely level all the way around, we were able to use the construction glue between the first and second layer of blocks. The construction glue is inserted into the blocks through a caulking gun. If you don't have much experience with caulking guns, do be careful with air bubbles in the glue. When you pierce the glue tube seal and begin to squeeze it out the caulking gun, sometimes there will be air bubble that keeps the glue continuing to come out, even if you're not squeezing the caulk trigger. Release the caulk gun trigger each time and it will slow the glue from coming out. Once the air bubble passes from the tube, the glue will no longer continue to run. In my case, I took one block off at a time on the second level and put the glue in a circle on the first level blocks. Then I repeated this for all the blocks in the second level, tapping each one 
with a mallet to spread the glue out more evenly. Then we set up the third level of blocks in the same manner as the second level, and then installing the entire level of blocks first, then removing each block individually to install the glue between the two levels. Once you're finished with all that, you can place the metal fire insert over the top of your last layer of blocks. With the insert in place, I topped all the blocks on the outside to the third level to make sure that they were all sitting tight and next, next to the insert. With that final inspection, I made sure that all blocks were tight and that the insert was good to go. Now, I didn't touch anything for 24 hours to let the glue set. We did receive some rain during the time, so I checked if the glue was set by trying to pick up one of the blocks and it didn't budge. I think the glue is key to keeping everything together rather than just loose laying blocks. Now, if you want your blocks to last longer, you can line fire bricks around the bottom of your pit where the paper blocks are exposed to high heat. You could also install lava rock at the bottom as well. All in all, this project took about an hour from starting to place the first block. And then the site prep also took about another half hour in my case. In your case, it will probably take a little bit longer if you're removing grass from the area. And now make sure you watch this video next as I, we walk you through how to install river rock around your fire pit area. And I'll see you over there.